who hasn't longed to talk to the animals like Dr. Doolittle? There's no doubt that all animals have ways of communicating with each other, whether it's a barking dog, a colour changing squid, or even a signing gorilla. But these animal calls are a far cry from the in-depth conversation that we're used to having over a cup of tea. And that's because almost all animals lack the ability to talk using just subtle changes in their vocalisations to convey complex meanings about themselves, their actions and their innermost thoughts. Us humans owe our linguistic skills in part to the intricate machinery in our chests, throats and mouths. Contracting the muscles of the rib cage and the diaphragm compresses the chest cavity and forces puffs of air out of the lungs and up through our trachea. The rushing air passes through our larynx, otherwise known as our voice box, where it vibrates thin stretched membranes, our vocal cords, to produce a sound. Using the muscles in our throat, we can change how tightly the vocal cord membranes are pulled, which changes the pitch of the sound. But that's not talking yet, because the sound then passes through our mouths, where it needs to run the gauntlet of our tongue and lips. Try talking while keeping your jaw, tongue and lips totally still. That's higher than you think. So while the larynx is responsible for turning a puff of air in the lungs into a sound in the throat, it's the flexible parts of our mouth that really shape the words we say. But why do animals fall short? Well, even gorillas and chimpanzees, some of our closest evolutionary relatives, don't have anything like the complex language we humans do. The scientists think that it's down to the shape of their mouths and throats. Our apish cousins have a short sloping neck and a large large protruding jaw, giving them big mouths which are good for eating, but less good for making words. Us humans, on the other hand, have longer necks and smaller mouths, which gives us more versatility in the kinds of noises we can make. It doesn't take much movement of our jaws, tongue and lips to form a whole range of words. So Homo sapiens are uniquely gifted with the right shaped throat to make the kind of noises we call words. But when it comes to vocal acrobatics, Acrobatics, we could learn a thing or two from the humble bird. Birds have what's known as a syrinx in place of a larynx, and with it they're able to produce some of the most beautiful and complex songs and calls. <laughs> Syrinxes are even versatile enough that some birds, like parrots and lyrebirds, are able to form human words and imitate the sounds of machinery and vehicles. What sets these extraordinarily gifted birds apart is that they're vocal learners. They have the ability to hear a sound, learn how to make it, and then repeat it. It's like us mimicking the woof of a dog or the of a cow. We are vocal learners and so are parrots, but not many other animals are, and they're only able to make the sounds they were born making. The secret lies not in the shape of the voice box, but in its connections with the brain. Vocal learners have a direct connection between their forebrain and vocal muscles, which gives them precise control and understanding of the sounds they can make. But while they might be able to understand how to make the sounds, no other animal has yet shown that it understands what those sounds really represent, with one exception, an African grey parrot called Alex, who during a day of learning to repeat colour words, looked at himself in the mirror and asked, what colour am I? To ask an existential question like that, Alex must have cracked the fundamental skill of talking to not only speak words, but to organise them into meaningful and novel sentences. Aside from Alex, only humans have ever been known to do this, and it's probably a direct result of our big, complex brains. We have specific areas of our brains that are dedicated to understanding, planning and producing speech. They're called Broca's area and the Wernicke's area. Our close evolutionary relatives monkeys and apes have similar structures that are involved with making hand and face gestures, but that's where the similarities end. The noises that monkeys make come not from Broca's area, but from the more primitive limbic system and brainstem. In fact, it's a particular quirk of our neurology that means that we're able to perform the mental acrobatics to grapple with language at all. So it seems that when we're chattering away over a cup of tea, we're making use of a startlingly 
complex combination of physical and mental apparatus. Other animals might have some of that talking toolkit, but we alone have the full package. So do you wish you could sing like a bird or that your pet could talk to you? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to BBC Earth Unplugged for more science and nature videos.